Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got an exciting video for you that I have had lots of requests for and honestly I've put a lot of time and research into it so I'm pretty excited about it. If you're new here you'll catch on to the joke pretty soon that everybody calls me an adult iPad kid because of how much I use my iPad for school and honestly everything else. Um, I use it more than my computer and after spending hours and hours and hours watching tutorials and honestly just trying to find good tutorials I think I found the ultimate hack for the ultra productive iPad setup for students, for designers, for anybody anybody working or anybody who has an iPad. So today I'm gonna share a little bit about my iPad setup, the things that I like accessory wise, um, a little bit of a tour of my iPad, and then a tutorial of how to best use it for note taking and just how to set it up in general because it can be really confusing and I'm trying to make a really slow step-by-step -step tutorial because I struggled to find one to make this for myself. Now, I do have the iPad Pro, the big one, the 12.9 inch iPad, and I would not go back to the smaller one after using this big one. Um, I, I love the size, it's perfect for everything, and honestly, most of the time in class, I'm doing split screen, so the size is the best. This is the third generation. I literally think I bought this in like 2018. So I've been uh, looking into the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, and I've been using it, and I love it so much. It is literally just what I wanted, just what I needed for all my note taking. So now I'm going on like five or six years with the same iPad and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. As far as Apple Pencil goes, I have the second generation Apple Pencil and again have had no issues with it. I really like it. The one thing I do have complaints about as far as the iPad and traveling and everything with it goes is that the pencil is just supposed to rest on top of the iPad. It has like some magnets right there, um, but when I was carrying it in my backpack, a lot of times it'd get knocked off and I have had friends lose theirs before. So I invested in this case and I've used a couple different ones throughout my college uh, career. I'm using this one right now. I'll link all these in the description box. But essentially all this does is holds the pencil like within the case <laughs> so it's not gonna fly out in your backpack or you're not gonna lose it that easily. The other really nice thing about this case is it is slim enough that it does work still with the Magic Keyboard, and I actually use this quite a bit too. I know a lot of people question like, hey, what's the point of getting another keyboard, especially an expensive keyboard like the Magic Keyboard, when it essentially just turns it into a laptop. And while I do partially agree with that, there have been so many times that I've used both my laptop and my iPad at the same time using both the keyboards. All in all though, if you're not wanting to invest in a really nice keyboard, I think there are a lot of options here for a cheaper keyboard that you could still get and have the same functions. So I found while well, I loved having this case and I loved having the keyboard, there were a lot of times when I would write and this would just be like flat on my desk and it was really uncomfortable to write like that. I wanted it propped up. And there are a lot of cases you can buy where you can like fold it and stuff like that, but because I had this case, I couldn't do that. So I ended up doing some research and I landed on a website called Moft. How this one works is it gives you like this little magnetic sticker. This doesn't affect your iPad in any way and it still works with the Magic Keyboard. But then you can go ahead and slap this thing on and there's a couple different ways you can fold it to then like have it propped up. On my actual iPad, I do have a matte screen protector. Again, there are a couple different options here. You can get just a matte one, you can get a glass-like one. Um, the one that I use and the one that I've converted all my friends into using is the paper-like one. It has like a little tiny bit of grain, so it just feels a little bit more like you're writing on paper. And I personally have not had any issues with this degrading the Apple Pencil tip. I know like the name brand one is like $60 or something. I bought like a knockoff version on Amazon and again, I love it. So without further ado, let's go into the tour part of my iPad and how I have mine set up for the most productivity that I can possibly have. Here's my home screen. I love this. I think it's a little fun. So this is what I like to call my landing page. I have basically adjusted everything and you'll see I'll get into the tutorial because I searched far and wide for a good tutorial on the internet and I could not find anything and it took me probably five hours to figure this out so I want to make a really in-depth slow tutorial of how to actually make this on your iPad because in my opinion it's one of the best functions and a lot of people don't know about it. So what am I talking about? This. You can see right here I have a widget that is a shortcut widget and I have put in here a bunch of different shortcuts to activate different focus modes. And when I click on them, it'll change my entire wallpaper and all my apps to be in that certain focus mode. So this is really useful for me because when I'm studying or when I'm in class, I just want quick access to the apps that I know I'm going to use. Essentially, I've created four different focus modes for the things that I use my iPad for. Just my main iPad landing zone, work, school, and then just creative, games, whatever else you want to call it. And depending on which focus mode I'm in, I have completely different apps and backgrounds and aesthetics for each of those things. 
So on my home landing page, I have a couple different widgets. I have this one that I like a lot. It's an app called MD Clock. Um, you have lots of different options for different clocks within here and you can add them into widgets and you'll see that I have a bunch of different ones and I love these. Um, this one's pretty simple to add, it's just the little battery. And then the last widget I have added right now is an app called Minimalist. And this is a great app for just quick access to a to-do list. I love checkboxes, that's how I work. I organize everything and all my assignments by these kind of things. So I think this is a really nice function. All that you have to do is click on it and it would obviously check it off. So if I just went grocery shopping, you know, it just checked. And if you want to add anything, you just click on the widget. Let's say I need to add, it's now on there and it'll be right there. Then on my landing page, I have just four apps right here. These are just kind of my like whatever if I'm opening it and I just want to do something real quick on my iPad. These are probably what I'm going to be using. The app store, the calendar, crossword, and files. Now if I'm going to switch my focus mode, let's go ahead and go into school since most of you are students and this is probably the one you care the most about. So you can see now I've used the same app, the MD clock, and I just changed it to a different clock and added another widget here. This one's a little bit simpler, analog clock, kind of a fun little moment. I've kept my focus mode shortcuts right here, and then I've added two widgets right here. These for me are the same thing, but kind of different. <laughs> so the first one is an app called Flow. Both of these are like countdown timers for studying. That was a technique I kind of dove into my last year of school was the Pominandro clock technique. I don't know if that's how you say it, but essentially you like study for a certain amount of time and then you get a break, a short break, then you do those intervals a couple more times and then you get a long break. So if I click on this widget, it'll pop open this clock. You can see I'm in the middle of a session. <laughs> this is a session that's probably a bit old because I've I'm graduated now. All I would have to do is press this play and it would continue counting down for this last session that I'm supposed to be in right now. I guess I never finished it. Oops. But on this widget, instead of having the countdown timer, I've put a quote. It'll just change every day, so this isn't something I set there, um, but I think those are kind of fun. Something a little different. Now, this last widget that I have in my school mode is an app called Forest. If the Pominandro technique isn't working for you because it's not interactive enough or you don't like seeing the countdown timer, this one is also a little bit more fun because just the little tiniest of rewards is enough to keep me going. You can set the amount of time you want to study for. I recommend 25 minutes and then you plant a tree and you can pick the different plants you want and as you level up, you get different plants. Again, it sounds really dumb, but when you're 10 hours deep into studying Ochem, this is life changing. Some of these apps are apps you might have seen or tried or heard of before. Again, these are things that I found and kind of narrowed down into my best study selection. There are a lot of options here and I think the biggest one is different note taking apps. If you're here, I'm sure you've already heard about Notability, GoodNotes, OneNote, Evernote, I mean, a bare note. I think there's like a million different note apps. How I have mine organized is I have like three main folders, college, MCAT, other. But within this college folder, I have every single semester I've done this. So if you don't believe me here, when I say I have used this iPad religiously throughout my entire college experience, here's every single one of my semesters and every single one of my notebooks from my entire college degree right here. One of the good things about these note apps is you can import PDFs. I always found it super helpful if my professor was going to give me their lecture slides to go ahead and download them before class and then I could annotate them. I liked this but it kind of depended on the class. Like for this neuroanatomy class that's all that I did. I didn't really take any extra notes. I basically just highlighted and annotated and this was the best way for me to study for an anatomy class. I also really like this new scribble feature that they have where essentially you can just scratch something out and it erases it. One of the biggest things with these note-taking apps that's going to change your whole life if this is your first time using the iPad is the lasso tool. Let's say I wanted these things actually closer to that last one, I can just literally pick them up and slide them wherever I want. It also has this really cool ability to read your handwriting and if I wanted to search up a word, I can and it will recognize where I wrote that on which page and show me that page of notes. Now as far as how to take notes, I think that this is also a really cool feature that is brand new on the iPad and it's the ability to drag and drop different things into your notes. So let's say I wanted this diagram in my notes. All that I have to do now is hold on this image and drag it over and it drops it right there. Now this is another hack that I kind of discovered halfway through my college career and I have used it a lot more than I like to admit, um, but I downloaded this calculator app called Calculator X. There are a ton of them. I like this one because it's the most ad-free. 
um, and you can go ahead and slide and it's kind of a little bit finicky you have to slide it in just the right place for it to not go on the side we don't want it to be split screen we just want it to drop kind of like that um, so if I wanted the calculator let's say I was doing some math swipe it on over 80 times 60 boom have my answer keep writing my notes swipe it away and that is it as far as note taking goes. Again, I feel like I could talk for like 30 minutes about GoodNotes and a bunch of different note taking apps and how I best utilize it. Um, so if you want me to do another video on that, let me know and I'll do it. I also consume a lot of content when I'm studying. I try to pre-read a lot before class and then really pay attention and brain dump after class what my professor said. And then I want to flashcard, flashcard, flashcards. So with Anki, it's this really cool flashcard app that has a program built into it to basically force you to do spaced repetition within your studying. So it'll show you a flashcard. When you tap on it, you rate it good, hard, easy again. And based on what you rate it, it'll show it to you again in a certain amount of time. So if if you're really staying consistent with your flashcards, um, you'll memorize huge amounts of information in a really simple way. I also quite literally have taken my iPad to the gym before and put it on the treadmill and then used this like remote thing to click on them while I was doing flashcards literally walking on the treadmill. So yeah, I think that was like the peak nerdy I've ever been. I also love Khan Academy. Saul is my guy, okay? He helped me through so many of my classes. I love the app on the iPad. Um, have really quick access to a lot of different courses and their videos are just overall incredible. Now, if your university offers digital textbooks, um, I love that the iPad has the ability to put it on there. So I did this a lot of the times. This is one of my apps that has an anatomy textbook on it. Um, and this is just the digital version that came with my other anatomy book. If we go to my creative home screen, we get a little bit more design apps and editing apps. Um, I have this remote camera that goes to my camera. I can like see everything on my iPad that my camera's shooting. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is an editing software. I have a couple more editing apps like Lightroom, Photoshop. Um, then I have some drawing apps, Paper and Procreate. Let's say I drew this, I can export it as a PNG and then I can use that as a sticker anywhere I want. I can text it to people, I can put it in my notes, um, I can upload it, I can put it in this video, you know, so it gets really cool. A lot of people use their iPads as a Kindle app. I have a Kindle, so I personally don't use it like that, um, but there is an app called Libby that I used to use on my iPad that uses your library card to then give you access to all their digital books that they have. And um, this is really cool if you like reading because it's just like a free version of that. If you have any library card, you get access to a lot of books, which I think is really cool. Now for my last one, work. Um, this is just some of my social apps, things like that. So probably nothing you haven't seen before. So the first step to this whole process is editing your home screen to be what you want. So if you hold down on your iPad screen, you get the option to edit everything. If you swipe to the right, you get a blank new page. You'll have to create a blank new page for every single focus mode that you want. If you click the plus in the upper left corner, you get the option to add widgets. For this demo, I'm going to create a focus mode called studying. So the widgets I'm adding are the Kindle app, a concepts blank page, Google, and this quote, that's just gonna change. This is from an app called Photo Widget. You download pictures, put them into an album, and it'll just rotate through those. So here's some quotes from Pinterest that I downloaded, and those will just rotate. And now I'm going to add any apps that I think might be useful for me when I'm studying. And the apps I'm going to add are Notion, this chemistry app, Word Docs, and Freeform. Once you've added everything that you want, you're ready to move on to the next step. So first things first, we'll go ahead and open the settings app and click on the filter that says focus. Here you can see all my different focus modes. And if you wanna add a new one, go up to the top right corner where that plus is and add a new focus mode of your choosing. For this demo, I'm going to be creating a studying background. So I already have a focus mode for this. Basically all that you need to worry about are these customized screens. So here we have all the different screens that we created before. All you have to do is select the one that you created for that certain focus mode. So all those apps that I made for studying, it's right there. I'm just gonna press that one. Basically all that this does is when I go into studying focus mode, it's only going to show me that one page. Now we go into how to edit the actual wallpaper. So if you're on your lock screen, if you hold down on the screen, it'll pop open options to edit different home screens. If you swipe all the way to the right, you get the option to create a new one. 
Here I'm going to use my photos, and I actually use the same lock screen for every single one of my different focus modes, just because I like this lock screen that much. You can also go in right here and add different widgets. Um, sometimes I like opening a shortcut here to my notes app. Uh, this is something extra, you know, you can worry about that later. But the general idea here is to customize it to your liking. Now, if you click add in the upper right corner, you'll get a button that says set as wallpaper pair or customize home screen. To get the different wallpapers, you want to click customize home screen. Now, all you have to do is alter this wallpaper, just like we did before for the lock screen, with any picture that you want. So for studying, I'm going to go ahead and click these butterflies just because I like them and I think they're kind of fun for studying. Now here is the key part. When you are editing it, there's a little button right here that says focus. You want to click on that and set it to the focus mode that you want it to go for. So I'm going to do studying. Essentially what this does is when you are in this focus mode, it's going to only use this lock screen and home screen. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the Shortcuts app. I've already created a folder for my focus shortcuts. I do recommend doing this. To create a new focus mode, you'll press this plus button at the top and then go to the search and look up focus. The button we want here is the set focus underneath scripting. And now we can adjust it. So we'll want to click do not disturb and change it to the focus mode that we're wanting to edit. And by clicking this off, it'll switch it to the right mode, which is on until turned off. But we do wanna go back in and edit it so it changes the name and the icon. Do this by clicking this button right here and clicking rename. And if you go back to this original drop down menu and click choose icon, there's a lot of options here for colors, different little emojis, things to make it a little bit more aesthetic. Take a second right now to make sure that this is what yours looks like because you want all these settings to be correct. So now, how to add the widget into your home screen. We're basically going to add a widget just like you would add any other widget. So hold the home screen until all the apps start jiggling, press the plus in the upper left corner, and search widgets for shortcut. If I only had four, which is what I had before and I would use regularly when I'm not doing a demo, I'm just gonna add that four. Now, if you press add widget, these are gonna go ahead and go right there. And now we have a control center for all of our shortcuts. Um, if it isn't pulling up the ones that you just made, make sure you hold on the widget, press edit widget, and change the folder from all shortcuts to your focus folder that you made earlier. And now just to show you, demonstrate how this works. So now when you press on one of these, it's going to shift your icons and your background and everything like we set up before. And that concludes my ultra productive iPad setup tutorial, tour, whatever you want to call this. Hopefully this helps clear up some questions because I have had a lot of people asking me how to use it and everything like that. So um, if you have any more questions, put them in the comments down below and I'll really try to answer them or make a follow-up video as well if you have suggestions. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys make. So thanks for watching.